everybody, I'm Natalia Bonner. Welcome back. I'm so excited to share a fun quilt block with you today. Okay, I am going to be machine quilting this block with a lot of marking and a lot of rulers. This is maybe a bit over the top when it comes to machine quilting a whole entire quilt. Maybe not, maybe you want to quilt your quilts this detailed. I thought it would be fun today to walk you step by step through my process, marking out this whole entire design and then continue on quilting out this design. So this is a pretty detailed design. Sit back, grab a cup of coffee, and enjoy this fun video. Before we get over to the video though, I do want to tell you, this sampler that I'm quilting on today is a sampler for my online class, Let's Stitch a Figurative Quilt. Now the designs in this class are not quite this detailed. This one's a little bit out there. I love it though. <laughs> but. The class does offer several different designs. We've got border designs, we've got block designs, great designs to use on actual quilt blocks, plus background fillers, hexagons, and so much more. You can find all the details for that class in the description below or over on our website, peaceandquilt.com. Okay, so today though, you're going to see, I'm going to be using a Mark Beyond marker, some machine quilting rulers. I'm going to walk you through marking out this design and then machine quilting. When we get to the machine quilting portion, I'm going to be doing all of my quilting on my Gamel 22 inch machine. This is hand guided. I am going to be stitching in the stitch regulated mode and I have my stitch length set at 12 stitches per inch. Now, before you do any machine quilting with the rulers like I'm going to be doing, you need to make sure you know the basics. I do have an awesome book, Visual Guide to Creative Straight Line Quilting, that covers all the basics, including the tools that you need to know and use to get precise machine quilting with ruler work. When we begin stitching, I'm going to be using <clears throat> a gray color of thread. So you'll notice that it's going to stand out quite a bit. On your own quilt, you could adjust your designs and switch thread colors. For me, using a gray color of thread like this shows up a little bit better on camera for you to see, but this is my quilt. I just wanted to have fun and try all the things on it. So that's why I did choose to use a slightly off color gray thread throughout this whole entire block. The batting that I'm using here is one layer of the Quilter's Dream wool batting. You can pick up all of these notions, including our brand new Peace and Quilt Pop Socket Ruler Grips over on our website, peaceandquilt.com. Let's get stitching. All right, so this block does have a lot going on with it. Maybe you want to quilt your log cabin blocks like this, or maybe you can take the inspiration from what I'm doing here and use this on border designs. Either way, I think it turned out pretty dang cool. Let's start out by doing some marking. On that outside border, I'm going to use a long ruler and I'm going to mark a straight line that's a quarter of an inch in from the outside all around this outside and inside of this block design. Now on this block, I am quilting this design on the panel, the sample panel, for my online class, Let's Stitch a Figurative Quilt. This panel has a small line around the outside. That's what that line is, you can see there. The reason for that was just to separate the designs from the background. Once I have those first lines marked out, I'm measuring across my block design to see what my spacing can be between these straight lines. As I measured across, my design was just slightly off from where I want it to be. I want these lines to be evenly spaced about a half inch apart. So as I'm marking my designs, I'm going to mark them just slightly less than half inch apart. Instead of getting all technical with my measurements, I'll just kind of adjust a tiny bit as I go. As I get close to that corner with my markings, I may need to still adjust slightly. But if I've worked my lines over just a little more than a hair, usually I'll end up with a pretty good result. When I get to my corner, I am going to mark a couple of angled lines through that corner, and then I'll continue down the side marking those lines. Just this time, they're going to go horizontal instead of vertical. 
Now, when I'm machine quilting, I don't always mark out this much, but sometimes it is helpful to go through and mark out your whole entire design before you begin machine quilting. Completely personal preference. I don't feel that there's a right or a wrong way. Through the center of each of these green, gray strips, because they're a smaller strip, and I want a place for my eye to rest. I know in each of the colored strips, the blue, green, yellow, and the corner block, I'm going to do some pretty dramatic quilting. So if I do something more simplistic in those gray sections, I feel like overall it's going to give my eye a place to rest and still let those other sections really just pop. Now I'm going to move to the green section where I'm again going to start out marking a straight line that's a quarter of an inch in from the inside side of my border and then also in from the outside side of that border. I like to use the blue Mark Be Gone marker for my markings. I do have a solution of baking soda and water recipe. We'll post the link below that you can check out. It's a great little solution to help you remove those markings after your quilting is complete. Whenever you're using the Mark Be Gone marker, make sure you do not get heat on it. Heat will set the Mark Be Gone marker. In this green section, I'm keeping it nice and simple, so I'm also going to measure and mark a straight line right through the center of that green section. All right, now moving on to the next gray section. Again, we're going to keep that gray section pretty simplistic. So I'll measure, figure out how wide that design is, and then I'll mark a straight line, horizontal, and then a vertical one right through the center of that block. Now moving on to this yellow section, I'm going to play around with some angled lines. Starting in the corner, I'll stitch or mark out one 45 degree angled line. Then from there, marking again from that outside corner on the yellow section, I'm going to mark a long yellow li a long line from that outside corner to the inside opposite side. I'll repeat that on both sides. Then I'm going to make another marking again from that same point. This time I'm going to measure in a half inch and I'll mark to that point on both sides of this yellow section. I want to add one more line to that outside of that yellow section. So I'll move over one quarter of an inch on the outside of those lines and mark a line. I'll also mark a line a quarter of an inch on the inside of those lines, making a small kind of echo line. Now I felt like after getting that marked out, I needed one more line. So I'm going to move a half inch out on the outside of that most outside line and mark one more increment. Now I'm going to move on to that gray section where I'm going to mark out one more line right through the center of the gray section. Then we'll move into that center block where I'm going to mark an X through the center of the block. I'm also going to hold my mark, hold my ruler right through the center of the block and I'm going to mark one increment right in the center of the triangle on the left side and the right side. Now that I have all of those markings complete, I'm ready to begin stitching. 
I'm going to start out stitching on this design using my mini four-in-one machine quilting ruler in that inside lower block. So I'll start out by stitching in the ditch around the outside of the block and then stitching along those diagonal lines to complete my X. Now you'll notice as I stitch along those lines, I will stop and stitch the point to point line to fill in the arrow on the left side of the block. Once I've filled in that arrow, then I'll complete the X. After I've completed the X, then I'm going to fill in that top section with those evenly spaced, as close to evenly spaced as I can create those matchstick lines from left to right. From that point, I'm going to stitch an arrow over on the opposite side. I'm going to then travel across my block and I'm going to stitch some more matchstick lines in that bottom section, but I'm going to stitch these ones horizontal just to create a little bit of extra interest on this fun block design. From there, I'm going to travel up the ditch along the side of my block where I'll stitch in the ditch between that gray section and the yellow section. Once I've stitched around that section, I'll stitch right through the center along my marked line. Now from that point, I'm going to travel up to the top of the yellow section. I'll stitch in the ditch between the yellow and gray sections. Now I'm going to start stitching along those marked lines. So when you have marked out your lines, especially when you're a beginner quilter, when you're starting into ruler work, if you want a more precise look, this can eliminate a lot of the guesswork. And if you're struggling with ruler placement, it does help to have some marked lines so that you can eye learn to eyeball where you'll want to position your ruler when you start doing a bit less marking. I'll continue on stitching along all of those lines to finish off that yellow section. Once I have that yellow section complete, now I'm going to travel onto the next section, onto the green section. So with this design, I have all of those lines all marked out. So I'm going to stitch simply right along those lines using the ditch on the outside of my block as the place where I travel from one line to the next. Now that I have that green section completed, I'm going to travel up to the next gray section where I'll again stitch in the ditch between the green section and the gray section. Then I'm going to stitch along my center marked line 
using my ditch as the place where I travel from one point to the next. Now we've got just one border design or piece of our log cabin left to stitch out. So well, I'll start out by stitching along that marked line. I like to stitch out my long straight lines first and then come back through and stitch along all those short marked lines. Then I'll travel along my ditch, stitch out the second long straight line all the way around or the echo line. Now, if you did not mark out this line and you wanted to stitch out this design, I'd simply use my machine quilting ruler as my measurement. So once I've stitched all the way over to the left side, now I'm going to stitch right along each of those marked lines, making sure that I make my machine stop and take a stitch every time I change directions. So slow stitching, but you can create some really incredible texture. I hope you all found a bit of inspiration from this fun machine quilting video. If you want to find out more about these amazing designs like this, make sure you do check out my online classes, especially Let's Stitch a Figurative Quilt. Have a great day, everybody.